And this is Jay Taft, once again, with your weekly sports podcast with Rockford Register Star and rrstar.com. The podcast name is Not Just a Game, which has been very fitting for the guests that we've had over these past few weeks and the guests that we're going to have again today, um, because it's just not, it's not about just the game these days. There's too much going on in this world. Um, so I'm bringing on the guests that, uh, you know, can give us some insight and can help us through these times. And that's certainly the case today. Um, I have with us today is Joe Danforth, uh, a 25 year Rockford police veteran, uh, Fred Van Vliet's stepdad. That's certainly one of your titles as well, <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Fred is a NBA star who's from our area and has made a lot of people around here proud. Um, and Joe, you're also a longtime Auburn assistant boys basketball coach, uh, a prominent uh, member of the community. There's a lot of things I want to talk to you about, and I really appreciate you joining us. I hope you and your whole family and everybody's safe and healthy right now. Oh, yeah, we good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, let's get right into it. I mean, uh, I briefly talked about Fred, and he's your stepson, and you uh, you guided him through a heck of a lot of stuff going through as in his, as he was growing up. Um, and look where he's at now. He had Toronto Raptors guard, won an NBA championship, um, accomplished so much. Um, but what he's done on the court in some of our minds is – not even as big and as as important as what he's done off the court and what he still does off the court. And right now he's a voice for the NBA. And this week the NBA has let its voice be heard. They boycotted some playoff games because of the um, shooting of Jacob Blake in mm -hmm. Kenosha and, mm -hmm. and everything that's unfolded over these weeks and months that we've been dealing with. Uh, the racial injustice and the protests. Um, Joe, give me your take. I know you're real close with Fred and you know everything that's going on on the inside there. Give me your take on what Fred and his NBA brethren have done here the past few days, letting their voice be heard. Um, is that going to help? And, and what, what else can be done? Um, I think with the platform that those guys have, I think in a lot of ways it can. It's, it's almost like, um, you know, um, you know, they, they get a chance to use that 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 power that they have to uh, to let other people hear, you know, what they got to say. You know, these guys are, you know, they millionaires, and you know, kids look up to them. You know, even though some of them don't want to be role models, they are, and you know, and what they say, you know, carries a lot of weight. And um, you know, and 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 some of the things they do carry, you know, carries a lot of power. And, and what they say and what they do. Whether they want it to or not. Yeah, yeah. whether it's a, a good way, a negative way, or whatever. You know, it's, you know what they say, you know, they may not think so, but what they say carries, carries some weight, you know. Um, and I just think with everything going on, you know, they got a chance to use that voice, man, uh, to, to really push some, you know, to push some stuff out there. Definitely. Um, kind of backtrack a little bit, and you you talk to Fred quite often. You said you've been playing phone tag with him the past day or two. Yeah. When you when you've been talking to him over these past week or even few days, what advice have you given to him? What kind of discussions do you guys have? I know he's a grown man now, yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, but but still, we we have these discussions, and we're all still learning through this. What what have you guys talked about a little bit? But really, the to tell you the truth, when we when we did when we talked, it was you know right when everything had had kicked off in the bubble and and they were ready to start playing, and then he was like, man, I really don't feel like playing with everything going on. Uh, you know, guys want to, guys don't want to. You know, guys want to play, guys don't want to play. And, you know, and you know, it's just like man, it's just a, a big toss up. What are we gonna do? And then you know, when everything got going, you know, everything was fine. Everything I go and everything was fine. And then you got the thing that happened with Jacob Blake. And now, you know, um, none of them wanted to play. And then they all came back and said they were going to play now. And uh, I just think it's just been a roller coaster, man, of, 
of what's been going on. You know, it, his view was, you know, if everybody else plays, then I'll play. If those guys don't play, then I won't play. You know, I'm not going to be the lone one out there saying that, you know, that I want to play and nobody else wants to play. You know, if the guys don't want to play, then, hey, they, they, you know, we don't need to play. But now he's to the point where he's at now, like, well, you know what? I don't feel like playing now. I, I, you know, my heart's not in it now because of everything that's going on. You know, so that's kind of – I think that's kind of where he's at now. But it seems like they made the decision to start back on Sunday anyway. So it seems like they, you know, they decided to come back. There's been some tough decisions that have had to be made over there. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I, I get the feeling that, you know, you feel like they could have done more. They could have maybe just gone home. They could shut it down. Yeah, they could have, but, you know, and, you know, and I know whatever I say is going to get blown out of proportion, you know, whatever, you know, and I hope not. But yeah. I guess you can look at it two ways. You know, when they're on TV, when they're, when they're voicing their opinions, when they have millions and millions of people watching them from all overseas and everywhere watching, I think their voice is bigger instead of them going back to their respective cities. You know, and because, you know, all the NBA guys don't live in one city. You know, these guys live everywhere. You know, so I think it's more powerful for them as, you know, you got all the NBA players together making the same statement and everybody's blasting this stuff out and then them going back home, you know, where things have been bad with these with these protests. You know, I mean, you know, you got guys that protest shooting. You got that kid, they brought a gun. Now, let's say, you know, um, you know, some of the Bucks players could have been in Kenosha that night when this whole thing went down. One of those guys could have got shot. One of those guys could have got killed. Who knows? You know, so I think for them in the position that they're in, you know, I think they're doing the right thing. I, I do think they're doing the right thing by by coming back playing because I think what it does is you 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 get that media coverage with not just LeBron saying one thing or then you got Fred maybe saying a thing. You got Giannis saying a thing. Now you got every – NBA superstar in the NBA saying the exact same thing all at one time instead of everybody being on a separate note. So um, I, I think it's, I think it's good that they decided to go back. It's one big voice. Yes. Which yes. is what we need. We need the, the bigger yeah. voice, the bigger, yeah. the better. Yeah. Um, talk about big voice. One thing that Fred, uh, I had quoted him as saying was you start to feel guilty a little bit. There's a lot of stuff going on for me back home. Uh, he's yeah. talking about here in Rockford. People mm -hmm. in my own community are dying. And then he stresses not by the police, but by a product of their own environment. Yeah. So you yeah. try and take all that in. But, yeah. we're, but then he says, but we're here and we're isolated, meaning yeah. in the NBA bubble there. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. He's kind of saying the same thing you just said is – Yeah. Um, you know, on one hand, they're, they're, they're kind of there and they're in their bubble is the appropriate word. Yeah. They're in a little yeah. bubble. It's hard yeah. to know what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but boy, your stepson has done a great job of, of vocalizing and, and um, getting, his, getting his voice yeah. out there and yeah. his mind out there. Are yeah. you a prou proud dad these days? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know... Um... You know, we, we've always, you know, let, let those guys, you know, all the boys, you know, speak their mind. And, and we had discussions about, about race relations and had discussions about, you know, um, you know, their mom is white, of course. You know, and, you know, we, we've had discussions about, you know, black and white and, you know, as they were growing up and, you know, how people should be treated. And, you know, um, even for me and my job, you know, um, you know, I never went to work you know, every day thinking I'm going to kill somebody or hurt somebody or do something like this. I've, like I told you yesterday, man, I mean, I ran through doors, kicked in doors, jumped over fences, chased cars, fought people and this and that. But it was the good fight trying to fight the bad guys, you know, trying to catch the bad guys, the people that do wrong, you know, not just some of this stuff that's going on now, man. You know, I'm, I'm not going out here looking to choke nobody out over no cigarettes or nothing like that. I'm, I'm not doing that. You know, I mean, it's just some of the stuff that's going on is it, it, just flat out wrong. It, it is it's flat out wrong. Can we talk about what can be done? Can you? Um, I think, you know, I was reading some stuff, 
that talked about, uh, I think it was New York talking about they were finally going to talk about banning their uh, policy on chokeholds. Yeah. And I was like, my God, that's got to be outdated because I've been high, I've been on a department since 96 and we don't use that. You know, we, we don't do that here. I mean, they told you, you know, they told us here, you better not do that. Right. You know, so, I mean, I mean, I think, I think some departments and I think they're still stuck in a lot of the old ways of, of how they used to do stuff. And somebody needs to go through and totally revamp all their general orders and, and the things that they do. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, you know, um, you're only as good as your training. I know people don't want to hear that, but you're only as good as your training. And, you know, and there's some stuff you do, you, you know, you look at it as an outlaw, you know, I mean, you know, I, I never went to work thinking I'm, oh, I'm gonna choke somebody today. I'm not trying to, you know, you're not doing that stuff, you know, but some departments still allow that. And I can't believe you actually still allow that. You know, you still allow people to choke people out. I mean, you know, this, you know, we're not doing MMA. No, you know, I was thinking the you know, same thing. We're not in the we're, octagon. You no, know, we're, we're not doing cage fighting. You know, I mean, it is days that you have to fight out here. Yeah, it is. But, you know, most of the time you're dealing with people that's actively resisting that, you you know, you don't have to choke out, especially when it's three or four of you guys that get them down quick, get them handcuffed and be done with it. You know, um, you know, um, the, the whole thing in Minnesota with, the, with, with George Floyd, I mean, you know, that, 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 that's like a kick in the stomach and it makes me and every other black policeman, I, you know, it makes us look like, you know, we're down for that and, or we're Uncle Tom's and, you and, know, and, and that's what we want to do. And we, we don't go to work with that kind of attitude. You know, we don't go to work like that, you know, and it's, and, and it's really a hard duality with uh, being a black policeman and then seeing a lot of stuff that's going on. You know, we all do the job hard. We all do what we need to do to make the arrest and to get guys in custody. We do all of that stuff, but you know, no, no, nobody's trying to go out here and, um, and, and, and sit on somebody's back, you know, put them in, it's called positional asphyxia. You know, nobody's trying to sit on nobody's back so they can't breathe, you know? And that's, that's another thing we stress here is, you know, is certain things that will send you to prison. And I don't feel like going to prison for anybody, you know? <laughs> so I'm not going out here to do nothing to send me to prison. And 99.9% uh, .9 of the guys I work with are not trying to go to prison either, you know? But like I said, I think it's just some cities, man, that just, you know, they they got these bad policies, you know, um, you know, they're, they're relying on too many tools instead of when you actually have to go hands on with somebody, you got to go hands on. There are so many good cops in this country. Yeah. Yeah. There, so and that's just it's being overshadowed and we have to be careful with everything. But as a black, what's it like going to work at each day as a black police officer? It must just be tearing it's you know it's tough um, you know what um dang it hold on jay no um, you're good i can hear you so i did talking. something with my phone wait a minute uh, all right so i'm learning all this new stuff so. <laughs> all right there we go, <laughs> there we go. so no uh, um you know it, it, it's it's tough and what's what's been going on but you know um you know, I, I still got to go in every day and I still try to fight the good fight every day. And, you know, um, you know, I've only, you know, you know, fortunately, I've only had one situation where, you know, somebody cussed me out over uh, over this whole thing that's going on. But everybody else, I still, you know, I'm a gang detective. I worked violent crimes for some years and I'm in gangs now. And um, I mean, I still get people call me every day. Hey, Detective Danforth, did we find so and so yet? Or hey, Detective Danforth, can you help me out with this? Or hey, Detective Danforth, I need um, you know, anything going on with my case, you know, and it's all all people of color that's calling me, and you know, and those people still won't help, even they, with everything going on, they still, you know, they they still have to have trust and believe in that we that we you know that we can still help, you know, and I hope that more people will will believe that except for. You know, two guys doing some isolated incidents that, you know, had nothing to do with us. You know. Yeah. Well, let me thank, let me thank you and all the good police officers out there. As I mentioned, there's so many of them, and you, know. you guys it go through so much. Well, well Jay, can, can can I say one thing real quick? Please. Uh, um, when, when I know a lot of people say, well, how come the good ones 
don't say nothing about the, the bad police officers. And like I said yesterday, you know, um, the, the guys that want to do that want to do bad won't do it in front of guys that's doing the right thing because they know we won't stand for it. You know, I mean, you know, they say, oh, where's the good policeman at when this went down? You know, a lot of times we don't work the same shift. You know, we all work, you know, here we all work single cars, you know. So, I mean, you know, if we're in a big city, I mean, you know, let, let's take Chicago, for example. You got like 10,000 cops, you know, 10,000 cops there, you know, and, you know, and you are out trying to do this job every day. And, um, you know, and it's a lot of good guys on Chicago PD, but it's, you got a handful that do, that do things they shouldn't do or New York or LA or whatever, but they don't do stuff around the guys that do the you job. Right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. They, they won't, you know, it's like you walk in the store with somebody and they know you don't, you don't steal. They're not going to steal in front of you. Right. You know, they ain't going to do it in front of you. But right. when you leave there, hey, I'm going to go ahead and do this, you know, but that's kind of, that's, that, that's my opinion. Though. That's my yeah. opinion. No, it's a fine line. I mean, and people aren't stupid out there and they know how to, get around things and they know how to hide we've yeah i mean the racists in this world we we're learning They're, they've been so good yeah. at hiding yes. we don't we don't yeah. even know where they are sometimes yeah yeah um, yeah but we're learning we're yeah learning. yeah yeah they're coming out they're, they're coming, coming out. out they're coming out is right yeah and hopefully they'll come out and it's, we can just end it all yeah um, and move on as a country and get better yeah. as a country. Yeah. Now, my last question for you, Joe, thank mm -hmm. you so much for all this time. This, this is mm -hmm. great stuff. How can um, sports help? Sports have always kind of given us a little distraction, a little easing of the stressful uh, part of life, um, but it hasn't quite been the case this time. Um, it can, will sports help us through this? Can yeah. like with what Fred and, and the NBA are doing, can sports find a place to help get us through this? You know, I, I think it can, I think it's therapeutic, you know, and I know the NBA guys and, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, they're, they're mad, they're pissed off right now. They're mad about everything that's going on. I mean, the, the NBA is predominantly black, you know, and, and, and all these black, you know, these black men, they come from, different backgrounds, different situations. You know, some of them didn't, you know, a lot of them didn't come from money, you know, and they grew up in the neighborhoods. They grew up seeing stuff. You know, a lot of these guys grew up seeing this stuff. So, you know, I think what, what, what they, if they, if they could hear what I'm saying, I think what they, what they don't realize is the things they do are soothing to people. And it's, and it's almost like, man, I got to see this every day. I got to see all the stuff on the news every day. I got to see everything about this pandemic. I can't go nowhere. We can't do this. I got to wear a mask everywhere. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to do this. And then when this game pops on, it's like, you, you just get a chance to breathe for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get a chance to breathe for a minute. Just like sit back. You know, let me get these two hours and just watch this game. Yeah. You know, and I, and, you know, I can just put away the problems of the world just for these two hours. You know, because it ain't going nowhere. The fight ain't going nowhere and this and that. But, you know, um, if you're in it every day, all day, Every day, all day, watching these, watching this, watching that. You know, you know, you start to develop PTSD and and depression and all this. And, you know, and and I think these guys don't realize, but what, what they're doing is therapeutic. You know, them playing is therapeutic. You know, it, it gives you a chance just to breathe for a minute. It's huge. It's important. Yeah. People realize yeah. they don't. You don't yeah. realize until we yeah. go through times like this. Yeah. And, and when you go through times like what we've had the past few months where we've had all these diff difficult things going on and we haven't had sports to lean on, yeah. Yeah. to yeah. fall back on, to yeah. give it a little break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're starting to get it back a little bit. And I, yeah. and we can certainly see therapeutic is a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just therapeutic. And one thing I like to stress that people would be like, Oh, you're just saying that because, you know, because of Fred and this and that Fred is going to get paid regardless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's going to get paid regardless. You know, it's about a lot of these guys play because they love basketball. You know, they love basketball. And, and they, they play a lot of times. Yeah, they play for the money, but it's not their whole factor. You know, they want to win. Fred's a winner. He wants to win. He wants to play. You know, and right now it's been tough. But, you know, if he sees this podcast, I just want him to know that, 
you know, what he's doing right now is, you know, he's soothing, they're soothing a lot of people. They're soothing a lot of people right now, you know, yeah. just by them bouncing that ball, man. You know, it, ain't, it ain't no shut up and dribble garbage. You know, it ain't none of that. You know, what they're doing, they're, they're, they're being, you know, they're, they're soothing people right now. They're helping people through a lot of tough times right now, you know, so we need I it. think it's helping. We need it. Yeah. And we yeah. need direction and we need loud voices to point us in that direction. And they're also giving us that as well. Um, yeah. And, and I just hope it helps and I hope it works and I hope yeah. a good policeman like yourself can stay safe and do your job and continue protecting yeah. us as a community yeah. Yeah. Um, and get the respect that you deserve. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Right. Thank you for what you do. Thank right. you for raising such a neat kid who is staring up the NBA. Yeah. Um, thanks for everything. And let's let's do this again soon, okay? All right. Thanks, man.